Hey guys, this is Lucy from Lucid Gaming, coming at you from the only YouTube channel making dreams come true. Today we're playing a free-to-play visual novel type horror game called Lynn, about a young girl named Lynn, who is dealing with the reoccurring nightmares about a girl at school. So without further ado, let's just jump right into it. When I regain consciousness, I realize I'm in a public bathroom. But it's not a normal public bathroom. The bathroom seems to extend outwards forever, infinitely, like an optical illusion. The dim light bulbs are suspended on flimsy plastic strings. They gutter in and out intermittently, unsure of themselves. My head feels heavy. Why does it hurt so much? Stress plus one. Seems like we have a stress meter on the side. I'm sure that's going to come into play eventually. I'm not quite sure what that's about yet, though. I sigh and hold a hand against my temple. I can feel it pulsing beneath my fingertips. Gross. Human bodies really are gross. They're bags of flesh that contain all sorts of stuff. Bones and blood and guts and goo. With hearts that beat and lungs that shudder and bladders that fill with amber urine. Thinking about it makes me want to dig my fingernails deep into my skin and dig it all out. But I bet that would look gross too. Maybe I should pull my eyes out first so I don't need to see all of the blood as it splatters on the tiles. But if I know anything about biology, which I don't, I'm rubbish at school, blood doesn't stay red for very long. When it's exposed to air, it oxidizes, I think, and then it starts to turn brown, and then it turns black. I try to imagine what it would look like if this endless, dingy bathroom was stained with my blood. I don't feel anything in particular. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel bad. Maybe that's because it hasn't actually happened. It's nothing more than a silly fantasy. My head is still hurting. My footsteps fall against the floor. When did I start walking? I don't know. I feel like I've been walking for years. The walls and the floor and the stalls and the sink and the dryers and the bins and the mirror continue to repeat over and over again in a loop. A stuck videotape. We still have some of Jazz's old videotapes from when she was a kid. It was mostly Disney stuff. Cinderella and Snow White. My parents aren't too well off, so we had to make do with our old battered VCR long after DVD players became the norm. Our VCR was like a monster. It made horrible noises whenever you put it a tape in there. And it had cannibalistic tendencies. It liked to spit out tapes with the film reels leaking out. When I was young, it used to scare me a little. Lots of things scare me. I turn my head, glancing this way and that. Finally, some noise. It was kind of eerily quiet. <laughs> there are five sinks lined neatly against with wall, complete with silvery taps and soap dispensers. I'm guessing that's supposed to be the wall. Somebody stole in a roll of toilet paper and left it sulking in one of the basins. Basins, basins, something like that. The paper flops limply over the side of the bowl. It's a bit sad. The taps are turned off, but water still drifts from their faulty heads. They're leaking. The lone roll of loo paper is starting to turn soft. It's collapsing in on itself like something rotten. I keep walking. I walk past the sinks. At least, I think I walk past the sinks. When I turn my head, I can see them again, right in the corner of my eyes. 
five sinks, chipped and cracked, with soap dispensers and the same roll of toilet paper lying in the middle of the rightmost basin. The roll of paper is still being waterboarded by the same faulty tap. I walk by, trying to ignore it, but when I glance to my right once more, there it is again. Five sinks. Five basins. One roll of toilet paper, decomposing slowly. The toilet paper looks worse every time I see it. White paper begins to flake away from the cardboard skeleton. It melts away. It feels like I'm melting away too. I don't know how long I've been walking. My feet are cramped inside my shoes. My toes are pushed up unpleasantly against the tips so that they rub red raw. That's when I realize I'm wearing an old white heel from Aunt Shirley's wedding. Not her last wedding, the wedding before that. I must have been nine or ten back then. I'm fifteen now. My feet have done a fair bit of growing. No wonder these shoes hurt so much. My feet weren't made for them. Not the feet that I have right now, at any rate. Why am I wearing them? It hurts. But I keep walking. I can't not keep walking. I'm afraid something bad will happen if I stop. Suddenly, alarmingly, I'm aware that I'm not alone. Two plus stress. There's something behind me. But I don't know what that something is. I look over my shoulder. My breath catches in my throat. Everything has been swallowed up by a musty, impenetrable darkness. The darkness smells like the inside of a walk-in wardrobe that hasn't been walked into in a very long time. I tremble. My footsteps strike against the tiles, over and over. My heart beats inside my chest. It knocks against my rib cage. My feet hurt. They hurt so, so much. I think they've started to bleed. Sores and blisters run along the backs of my feet. I can feel welts in the grooves between my toes. They're all bursting. Give it time and my blood will turn burgundy, and then dark red, then black. Aren't burgundy and red the same thing? Everything in here is the same. Everything repeats over and over again. The light bulb, the stalls, the sink, the taps, the toilet paper, the dryers, the tiles, the mirrors, and... The mirrors? Plus one stress. There's something strange about the mirrors. But no, it isn't the mirrors. It's the girl inside them. My white shoes slosh when I come to a halt. Everything smells. It smells of mold and urine and my own bodily fluids. But the girl who looks back at me in the mirror, my, her, fingers gripping the rim of the sink so tightly the knuckles turn white, isn't me. I stare. She stares back. Questions run through my head. Where am I? How did I get here? What is this place? I was me when I first started walking, I think. But the more I walk in these two small shoes, the less like me I become. I started to change. I just didn't realize it. Not until I saw myself in the mirrors. This girl. Plus one stress. I reach forwards, my fingers brushing the surface of the mirror. It's sticky, and it makes me feel sick, but my feet are sticky too, so it doesn't matter. The girl looks like me. She has the same hair, same eyes, same nose, same ears, same lips. But she isn't me. My muscles tense beneath her skin. Her face responds. It smiles when I smile. 
It frowns when I frown. This face is mine. But I know it isn't. It can't be. I'm not her. She's not me. Lynn? When I speak, an alien voice comes out of my mouth. My breath catches in my throat. And then... Plus five. Jeez. I wonder what's going to happen when we get up to 100%. I feel like that's going to be really bad. And I'm pretty sure this is the kind of visual novel I have to make choices. So that's probably going to come back to bite me. I feel something brushing against the back of my neck. There's nothing in the mirror. But there's something behind me. I don't know what it is, but I know it's something cold. Even colder than the roll of toilet paper soaking in the sink on the far right. I don't know how long it's been soaking for. I don't know how long I've been here. I don't know how long I've been her. I don't know anything really, but... 15%. I do know that this is it. The end. There'll be no more repetition. No more walls and floors and stalls and sinks and dryers and bins and mirrors. There's just me. Me, the darkness, and the bad thing that lurks within. Behind me. Breathing against my neck. Welcome home, Lynn, it seems to say, with invisible teeth encrusted with algae. We missed you. But that's not fair. They've got the wrong girl. I'm not her. I'm not. I'm not Lynn. Hey, Squirt. Rough night. I root through the bread bin, unearthing the last two slices of Wharton's half and half. Naturally, they're the crust, the cast off nobody wants. I glare at Jazz. She's sitting at the kitchen table, eating her own slice of toast, not the crust. She saved those for me. Oh, thanks a lot. No problem, honey. Why are you so selfish? Hmm, I wonder. Maybe it's because I'm a horrible person? Well, I know that. I slot my bread, crust, I mean, into the toaster and sigh. I feel worked up. I've been worked up ever since I woke up. I was worked up when I was brushing my teeth. I was worked up when I was combing my hair. I was worked up when I was putting on my skirt and sliding on my socks and buttoning my shirt. Now I'm worked up as I wait for my incredibly appetizing breakfast to finish toasting. I fish a knife in the cutlery drawer and peer inside the inner workings of the toaster. I peer a little too closely, actually, and my hair nearly gets caught inside of it. I draw back, startled. Just snorts. Well done, genius. Shut up. I stick my tongue out at her. She sticks her tongue out, too. I glance back at the toaster, and I don't lean in quite so closely this time. I tap my feet against the floor and sigh. Why is it taking so long? You going anywhere in a hurry? I have to go to school. I don't know why you're so eager. I always hated school. Yeah, but I have exams coming up. I pick up the knife and begin to prod at the tops of my slowly toasting crust. You shouldn't do that. You'll electrocute yourself. Like you care. I do care, actually, and you'll definitely care when one million watts of electricity are coursing through your thick skull. 
I'll survive. That's what you think. God, why do kids think they know everything? I'm not a kid. Please. Jess touched and rolls her eyes. She does this a lot. It's very effective. Jazz always wears a lot of makeup, and she's good at applying it. Her eyes are particularly expressive. Jazz is pretty already. She doesn't really need makeup, but the makeup makes her even prettier. According to Jazz, putting on her makeup is the sole thing that gets her out of bed in the mornings. I guess there's not much else for her to do. She doesn't have a job. She just sits around the house all day. Sometimes I wish I could do that. I thought you were meant to be the smart one in the family, Lynn. I'm not smart. I suck. Literally? Go away. Jess is the one who sucks. And that is literal. The bulge in her belly is proof enough. Not that you get pregnant like that. I know that much. I might be in secondary school, but I'm not thick. Not that thick, anyway. The toaster pings. My bread crusts pop up like I should be happy to see them. I'm not. Go away. I poke the crust with the tip of my knife again. They don't reply. Jazz does. Why are you talking to your breakfast, you crazy girl? I thought you said you didn't want to be late to school. I don't. Then why don't you get a move on? You miss your train. I know. I grab a plate and slide my crust onto it. I smear butter on the crust, an inch thick, like that'll somehow make it taste better, and a scoop of lemon curd for good measure. Lemon curd mixes with the gooey, bright yellow butter. The end result looks kind of gross, but it tastes fine. I take my plate to the kitchen table, and I stumble on the way there, twisting my ankle on thin air. I curse beneath my breath. Crap. Hey, Len. Are you sure you're okay? You look a little out of it. I'm sorry if my voices are changing slightly. I'm trying to give Lynn, like, my normal voice, and I'm trying to differ the other voices just, like, to spice it up. So, I apologize if some voices are, like, higher or lower than they normally are. It's hard to keep track of that. Especially, like, in upcoming videos. A little, I guess. Bad dream? Yeah. Bad dream doesn't quite cover it. Terrible like. My feet still hurt. I checked them when I woke up in the morning, trembling to see whether they were still in one piece or not. I was afraid they'd be bloodied stumps, the little bones all broken from being forced into the shoes too small for me. They looked fine, but that was ten minutes ago. What about now? My toes curl against the inside of my shoe. Jess stares at me. Does she think I've gone totally mental? Maybe I have. You were tossing and turning like the girl from The Exorcist this morning, Lynn. You woke me up. So that explains why Jas is up so early. She doesn't usually serve his until about noon. She doesn't have to. Not since she dropped out of sixth form college. All she does is practice her makeup in front of her vanity mirror. Our vanity mirror, actually, since we share the same bedroom eat cereal, and watch the Jeremy Kyle show. I stare at my crust. My crust stare back, slathered in butter and lemon curd. My stomach churns. I'm sorry, Jess. It's alright. I've already had my revenge. The bread? Mm-hmm. Jess coils a strand of her hair around her finger. She looks smug. So, what are you going to be doing today? More studying. Don't mention the S word. Now, now, you've got your GCSEs coming up. I'm not sure what that is. 
I'm pretty sure this is supposed to be, like, set in Japan, or maybe, like, Britain, or something like that, because it's, I can't recall any specific words, but they used a couple of words that, like, we don't use in the U.S., and they're saying, like, secondary school and stuff like that, and I know that we don't use those terms in the U.S., so that could be it, but what's three weeks? You better get cracking. I bite into my bread crust, smeared with butter and lemon curd. The butter is sweet, oily, and fatty, while the lemon curd is sharp and sweet. It's thick, sticky. It feels like it's clogging up my throat. Maybe I put a little too much on. You know, Mom and Dad expect a lot from you. Don't let them down. Okay, we're at 20% stress now. I feel sick. I definitely use too much lemon curd. Jess, please. What? It's the truth. After I turned out to be such a monumental screw-up, the least you could do is not fail all of your GCSEs. You're supposed to be the smart one, remember? That's what they said, but... My voice trails off. My cheeks are smeared with toast crumbs and bits of lemon curd. They feel oily. I swallow. I don't want to talk about it. Well, you'll probably be fine. You'd have to try to do worse in your GCSEs than I did. I'm just going to call them your tests. Yeah, but it's different now. You could retake your exams. I can't. Mm-hmm. Sucks to be you. Jess sounds so cheerful. It kind of makes me want to punch her. But I know I can't. Not anymore. We used to fight a lot when we were younger. With hair pulling and scratching, but... Now Jess is pregnant. I feel a little bit guilty about slapping her. You can't hit pregnant women. Even if that pregnant woman is your sister, who isn't really a woman. I don't think she is, anyway. She's only 19. She's still a teenager, technically. I click my lemon curdy tongue against the roof of my mouth. I should probably get going. You probably should. Don't drop out of school before your exams start. Otherwise, what would be the point? Sometimes, I think Jess derives happiness from my suffering. She really is a rotten big sister. She always has been like that. She used to bully me relentlessly when we were little. She was always kicking me beneath the dinner table, hitting me with the TV remote and whispering creepy stories into my ear at night when I was trying to sleep. She told me Santa wasn't real when I was four. I cried. I cried a lot. And then she went and got herself knocked up. And now she's so heavily pregnant that I can't argue back when she says starts being a jerk because I'd feel guilty. Maybe she's smarter than her test results gave her credit for. I drop my plate in the sink. It's coated with crumbs and a smear of buttery lemon. What are you going to do all day, Jas? Watch the Jeremy Kyle show, probably. Don't you ever get sick of that? Nope. I don't like that show. I think it's mean. It's the sort of show that makes fun of people like Jess. The audience watches these poor, sad, broken people pour out their guts and argue with each other and break down into tears. And then they laugh and cheer and applaud like it's something funny. It isn't funny. It's real people's lives, and I hate it. But Jess doesn't seem to care. I know it's mean, but I'm not on that show. Why does it matter? I run my dirty plate beneath lukewarm water and frown. It just isn't very nice. Says you! Didn't you give that girl in your class a black eye a few months ago? She deserves it. She called you a lady of the night. She might have been right. Jess prods at her belly. 
It strains beneath her shirt like a large, obscene balloon. Maybe I am a lady of the night. This is why I can't argue with Jess anymore. Not even when she steals my apricot yogurts. She doesn't fight back like she used to. The wind tugs at the hem of my school skirt, and I hold it down with one hand and use the other to support the straps of my beat-up old messenger bag. The bag is falling apart, and it doesn't close properly now, but I can't afford a new one. I'll have to bear with it, just like I bear with Jazz's hand-me-down uniforms, these old scuffed trainers. At least they're not the shoes I wore to Aunt Shirley's first wedding. I click my tongue against the roof of my mouth. Why am I still thinking about that dream? It must have left an impression on me. That's rare. I have bad dreams on an almost daily basis, but the details start slipping away the moment I open my eyes. It's definitely unusual for me to still remember. Not just the gist, but the specific ins and outs of my dreams while I wait on the platform number two at Strawberry Hill Station for my train. There are a few other people waiting, glancing alternately between their watches and their electronic signboard. Rush hour in London is never pleasant. The trains are always packed. I hate going to school, especially with a bulky messenger bag to manipulate. Once, I hit a small child in the face with my bag when I was scrambling onto the train. He cried, and his mother started scolding me very, very loudly in front of all those smart businessmen. What do you think you're doing, you clumsy girl? His nose is bleeding. You could have caused some serious damage. What do you have to say? By the end of this woman's tirade, I was almost crying too. I couldn't cry, of course, because I wasn't a little kid. And people don't think it's cute when teenagers cry. They think it's pathetic. I was 13 back then. I'm even older now. I don't feel any wiser, though. My tests are coming up soon. Then I'll be finished with school for good. I won't need to ride on a cramped train at half seven in the morning ever again, unless I decide to go to college like Jas did. I don't think I'd go to the same college as Jas, though, because she was studying health and beauty, it's a vocation subject. I think Jess is pretty good at health and beauty, especially the beauty part. She knows all about getting your nails trimmed and how to curl people's hair, but Dad wasn't very happy about it. He kept banging on, saying she was wasting her life, wasting her education. We've given you so many opportunities, and you fling them back at our faces. Why can't you be more like your sister? I don't know why anyone would want to be like me. I don't want to be like me. But at the same time, I glance to the right. I half expect to see the glint of metal taps in my peripheral vision become the basins, but I don't. Instead, I see a girl around my age, but not quite my age. I know her. We're in the same form group. We've been in the same form group ever since I started at Grace Court School. She's a girl who looks a lot like me, with straight black hair and brown eyes, but there's more to it than that. It's the arrangement of the features on her face, the shape of them too. Her eyes, her nose, her ears, her lips. She looks so much like me that it's a little creepy. She looks so much like me that Mrs. Madsey, our form teacher, did a double take when she saw us in our oversized gray court uniforms on our first day in seventh year. She asked us, in a very exaggerated tone, if we were twins. Like being a twin is something special. We're not, of course. We're not related at all. Well, we're probably related in some way if you go back far enough. But the blood ties us together is so weak that they'd be about 99 point blah 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 water. It doesn't help that she has the same name as me. A similar name, at least. My name is Lynn. She's called Lynn. She's me. 
but a me who reached into a Scrabble box and pulled out the extra vowel. Her name would be worth more than mine if you tried to play it on the board. Like she's so much better than I am. And in a way, I guess she is. Her school bag is nice and shiny. So are her shoes. Her uniforms are always iron and her tights never have any holes. She's like me, but better. Lynn with an E. She'll probably do better on her test than I will, too. That's a given. Lynn is really smart. I look at her. I look at her for a little too long, as I often do, and she lifts her head. Her eyes meet mine. Her gaze hurts. It feels like needles digging into the back of my skull. A short, sharp pain splits through the side of my head. I wince. I know this is going to sound petty, but I really, really hate that girl. Alright, well, I'm going to stop it there for today, guys. If you like this, leave a like and I'll make another episode. Thank you so much for checking out my very first video on this channel. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye!